correct. Kevin Wilson, we're up to you. Um, uh, nothing to see here is your next book. Uh, and it seems to me, ever since your, uh, that New York Times bestselling debut, The Family Fine, you've been concerned with family, and especially offbeat families, going off in a little bit different direction. It's particularly offbeat when you have a sort of woebegone young woman deciding that she is going to nanny, agreeing to nanny um, the two stepchildren of a wealthy former prep school roommate, and these two stepchildren have the sort of unfortunate tendency to burst into flame when they get upset. And I'm, so where, where, did that, where did those flaming children come from in your imagination? <laughs> yeah. um, so I really, I mean, every book that I write is really focused on family, the, the kind of two stages of family, like being born without being asked into this family, and then breaking that apart and reforming to make the family that you're going to live with for the rest of your life. And so I write about that again and again, but the other thing that I write about again and again is spontaneous human combustion. It's the third book that features it. It's a pretty wide open genre. <laughs> so, uh, I just kind of, I just set up shop there. Um, but but it's, it goes back to when I was a child, uh, a friend of mine, when I was very young, in grade school, had, had the Time Life Mysteries of the Unknown uh, catalog, and it was all about Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. I didn't give a shit about any of that. I just loved the spontaneous human combustion chapter, and I'd read it over and over again. Um, and part of it is that I, I didn't know it at the time. I only got diagnosed as an adult, but I, I had Tourette's, and my body, when I was a kid, it, I felt this weird energy inside of me that I had to get out and so I was constantly afraid that I was going to burst into flames I just assumed that's what was happening to me um, and so that became this kind of running thing I was just always afraid I was going to burst into flames and then as I became a teenager I kind of wished that I could uh, to keep people away from me to protect myself um, so it became this obsession and I just found my way working it into the stories that I tell and then I think what changed and what this book did was now I have two kids and um, my oldest son definitely exhibits t Tourette's too. And what I realized was um, there's, there's one thing to think that you're going to catch on fire, but it's another to think that your children are. Uh, and that becomes way more difficult is how do you care for somebody that you love who may burst into flames at any moment. And frankly, that's what parenting is for me all the time. I, my children they really do seem like they're gonna spontaneously combust. I'm just trying to keep them from doing it in public. And so um, that became the book, was how to figure out how do you care for someone that, that, that might blow up. Um, so I, I was finally able to get it out of me and, and focus on somebody else. It sounds funny, but it actually is very touching to read the book because Lillian actually comes to really care about these children and wish that the parents cared more, and, in, and ultimately not just a nanny, but she truly intervenes. So, um, uh, what are you telling us about raising children and the whole act of uh, how we should feel about children in the world? I, I, think, um, I think about this a lot is that um, the idea is that the strong protect the weak, right? Like, mm -hmm. but, but like the world that we live in, I, I don't think that's true. I think the strong will protect the weak if, it's in, if it serves their interests or if they feel like it, but generally they don't care. Um, and for me, it's that what I've started to learn in, as being a parent is that the weak protect the weaker, um, and somehow you find it within yourself to be strong in that moment, to protect the people that, that need it. Um, and so that's what, for me, parenting is, is that, and Lillian is, these are not her children, but she's, her whole life has been a disaster. She doesn't believe that she's worth anything. And so then how do you protect people? How do you take care of people? And it's that, it's that moment of believing that you're somehow capable of caring for something that is so delicate um, that at any moment could blow up. Zach, I, did, I meant to ask you this before, and I don't know if you've edited um, Kevin's other books. Have you? Yeah, this is um, our third book together. Yeah, okay, what's that, what's that like to work together, and how do you see this book as uh, different from, advancing on, complementing what's gone before? Well, as you can tell, he's a very difficult, angry person. <laughs> uh, he's awful to work with. No, I'm joking. I actually was very glad when I came to Echo because I had been writing his agent fan letters um, for years because I've, I've been a fan of his work before I got there. So then when I arrived, um, I was able to start working with him. So we did Perfect Little World together, and we did a um, story collection last year called Baby, You're Gonna Be Mine. Um, <laughs> And when we started working on Perfect Little World, I thought, well, this is very similar to Family Fang, except it's nice. 
you know, Family Fang was so dark and it had this kind of wicked sense of humor and Perfect Little World was, de- was similarly dealing with kind of the artifice of family and how you can try and make this utopic version of one. Um, uh, but it, it didn't have the same sort of darkness. It had, a, you know, a quirky humor to it. Um, and Nothing to See Here kind of feels like the perfect amalgamation of both of those books. So I don't see it as anything other than just the natural trajectory of, mm-hmm. of Kevin's um, own fascination with family and, and the relationships between parents and children and children and parents and the give and take um, between them. Um, and Baby, You're Going to Be Mine, being a story collection, had a little bit of everything. Um, it dealt with, you know, it had the kind of dark, fabulous mm-hmm. versions, the kind of more melancholy ones. So, um, but this, to me, is just like the essence of Kevin Wilson. Okay, so what comes next? Great question. More spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> more spontaneous combustion, as long as the books don't combust. You know, one of the things that also struck me of uh, Baby, You're Going to Be Mine was an LJ Best book, uh, and you know, one that I really loved. And I, I, I remember thinking back to it that uh, there are not just combusting children, but there are uh, combusting figurative figuratively, if not literally, young adults, or young adults as in 20s, which is where young adulthood is now. Um, and uh, you know, it seemed that those characters echoed, uh, that Lillian echoed many of the characters in the story collection. Did you get that sense as, a, as an editor first? You know, I don't know if I thought of that so specifically, mm-hmm. but it does, it does feel like these could all exist within the larger Kevin Wilson, Kevin Wilson universe. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I just, you know, he brings such a human touch to his writing and he treats everybody um, with a big heart. And so um, even, you know, in some of the stories in Baby, You're Gonna Be Mine, there are people doing bad things or there are children who are neglected and, and he never, it, it never dealt with anything other than um, the utmost artistry and, and warmth. And so, um, and this is, this is the same thing. This is about combustible children, but you know, I always like to tell people that no children are harmed in the making of this book because um, yes, they light on fire, and yes, that causes everyone around them to be very anxiety-ridden. Um, you know, understandably so. But um, they are not harmed. They, they they don't get blisters. They don't have burns. They just their skin gets red and they're agitated. But it's a really a reflection of their emotional and mental state more than anything physical. So. Um, you know, I, I, I think just the way he writes characters is kind of uniform. Okay. And like one a quick little last question. This book is the lead read uh, for the season? Is it for, uh, yes, for the season. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, and I'm not sure if you as an editor go in and pitch a book. I mean, how do you pitch a book about children combusting? Um, I do a lot of pitching, but for the lead read, that is entirely driven by our sales department. Um, and they have been selling Kevin's book since Tunneling to the Center of the Earth, and there's great affection for him there. So I didn't have to do anything okay. in that regard. But uh, in terms of how I pitch the book, um, you just heard it. So. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And so our last team. Um, disagreements, uh, editing style, what kind of editor are you, um, are you a butcher? <laughs> you know, are, you a, a list, are you a therapist? You know? I'm, a, I'm a little bit of everything. I'm not so much a butcher. Kevin is a very clean writer, so he doesn't require a lot from me. But I did notice that um, his main characters are always so, so vibrant. And sometimes the supporting characters start to uh, feel similar to each other a lot. But Kevin reminded me of something last night when we were having dinner that, um, well, I'll let you. Uh, is, uh, in, in the last two books, last two novels I've written, the, the, the parents of the main characters are not good people, just out and out bad people. And Zach was always like, um, nobody is this bad. You know, like we need to, we need to humanize them in some way because they're connected to this, these, these women. And for me, I think it was really hard because I just, um, to me, children are always right. They're always perfect. And... Uh, you didn't ask to be born, so you're blameless to me um, until the moment that you have a kid. And then once you do that, you're the bad guy. You did it. You brought somebody into this world, and you're a cop now. And so, to me, like the parents of the main character, I was like, that's on you. You did this. And Zach was like, but they're human. You've got to figure that out. And so I, I, I tried to as much as I could, but I still don't care for them. <laughs>
the other th the other one more quick thing sure. was that um, in editing Perfect Little World, uh, Kevin told me last night that he kept in mind some of my advice, which I appreciated. And this book came in um, like significantly shorter. I don't know if it was fifty percent, but it was it was yeah, much it was, shorter. The last book was a five hundred page book about babies, and Zach was like, maybe. A book about babies shouldn't be 500 pages, <laughs> and so I, we cut it significantly. And so this time I was like, I don't want to go through that again. I'm going to make this a very short book, and Zach will be happy. Yeah, and I was <laughs> yeah. short, but good. Uh -huh.